Hey, thanks for tuning in to Twang and Bang. If you're an archer, you know that accuracy with the bow depends upon maintaining a delicate balance of pressure in your bow hand and tension in your string or your release hand. And whether this balance comes to you naturally or it's something you have to work to achieve, even a small injury in either of your hands or your shoulders or your back can throw that balance off, leaving you frustrated when your arrows just don't hit the mark. This leaves many archers making the decision between just hanging up the bow or powering through the pain of an injury that should be given time to heal. Others decide to make a considerable investment in switching platforms altogether to a crossbow. But I think that there's another option that should be a lot more popular than it is because it's an option that lets you stay in the game with the equipment that you already have. It's called the inline draw lock from Hickory Creek Archery. And with it, you can take any bow with a standard mounting hole for an arrow rest and turn it into a vertical crossbow. Now, there's a whole lot more to this device than meets the eye. I want to take you through the genius in its design, especially of the release and trigger mechanism. I also want to show you how versatile this can make your bow, whether you're using it to compensate for an injury or aging shoulders, or you're just wanting to give your state's crossbow hunting season a try. And that's what's coming up next on Twang and Bang. Installing the draw lock is as easy as installing an arrow rest. Of course, you have to take out your existing arrow rest because you need to use its mounting hole for the mounting bracket of the draw lock. There are only three other main components to the draw lock, and that is the release bar. You've got the release mechanism itself, and you, up here you actually have a specially designed bracket with a whisker biscuit arrow rest. Bolting it on will take you only about two minutes. But then, just like any other arrow rest, you do have to tune it to your bow. You've got a vertical and horizontal adjustment to make on the bar itself. You also have to adjust the release to the draw line. The release bar has one inch adjustments to about here where they go to one half inch, which is about where most adult sized bows are gonna end up with their draw length. You adjust the release latch to where you draw right to where you start to feel a good reduction in, in pressure. Now you don't want to go all the way into the valley of your letdown because that will make your trigger uh, a little bit mushy. So in a sense you actually can use the adjustment holes to tune your trigger to your taste. I've got mine set to about five pounds but it's nice and crisp and, and breaks very cleanly. Now, cocking and shooting the bow is simply a matter of resetting the trigger and flipping the safety on, drawing the bow and hooking the D loop onto the latch, taking the arrow and knocking it on a string while pushing down on the anti dry fire lever. And then you click it into the arrow rest. When you're ready to fire, you just slide the safety out of the way, pull the trigger, and there you go. One of the really cool things about the draw lock is that you can take a right-handed bow and shoot it left-handed. So say you're an archer who ends up with an injury in your support arm, and you can't actually hold a bow out in front of you, whether it's got a draw lock on it or not. You just set it up the way you would set it up for a right-handed archer, but you just pick it up the opposite way. Swing the safety out of the way and bullseye, just like that. I think that is really cool. Of course, you don't have to support the bow at all. As long as you're careful about the path of the string and the limbs, you can use a stabilizer and a tripod to do the supporting for you. This can be really handy when hunting from a blind or in a situation where you just don't have the strength to hold the bow up with either arm. One of the things you want to make sure of with the draw lock is not to assume that it's safer 
than holding a bow at full draw with your hand because it's not. The D loop can fail and it's going to fire whether you're li you like it or not. So you have to make sure that you're not pointing it at anything you don't want to shoot. You have to make sure that you always, always keep your body parts out of the way of the string. Okay, so I want you to cock the bow. Remember what you need to do? Yep. You need to reset the trigger and flip the safety over. And that's the last thing you touch. Okay, so now you reach down and grab the string, and you pull it up, and then make sure you hook that onto the gold latch. Okay, so now's the tricky part. So we're gonna stick that on there and go ahead and oop, put out and now grab the, the white part. Okay, now remember, line up the dots with the string and the target. And once you get that, flip the safety off and pull the trigger. <laughs> That's awesome. What? Actually, that, 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 that was a bullseye. It just bounced off the target. Let's do that. So another cool thing about the draw lock is it's adjustable even down to kid size. I was able to put this on my daughter's Matthews Mini Genesis. And one of the neat things about it, as you saw in that clip, is that I'm able to give her instantly a consistent draw length and a consistent release. So she was hitting bullseyes when she's never been able to do that before. And you can see that was a lot of fun for both of us. Because one of the features of the Genesis is it has no set draw length. But that also means it doesn't have a back wall. So I've been having a hard time teaching her consistent draw length. But this does it for her and she had a lot of fun with it and that means I'm having a lot of fun with it too. So I removed the release mechanism from the rest of the draw lock because it will make it easier for me to demonstrate its features. But one of the first things that you're going to notice picking one of these up is that it's crafted like a, a Swiss watch. I mean, everything is so smooth the way it operates. There's not a sharp edge anywhere on this. And anodizing is obviously extremely high quality. It's got a nice two-tone finish so you can see the working parts of the trigger separate from the rest of the device. In the front here is the anti-dry fire lever. It's got one of the two springs in the mechanism. This spring not only works the anti-dry fire mechanism, but it's also what push, puts tension to cock the string latch because the string latch itself has no spring whatsoever. That actually helps to reduce the complexity as well as the tension that you feel behind the trigger pull. The safety is just this stamped and bent metal piece that uh, folds back, swings back behind the trigger, providing just a mechanical, mechanical block to being able to pull it rearward. Now, <laughs> Not only is that just a simple design, but if you're like me, you feel that like every rifle safety that's out there sounds like breaking a dry twig when that buck of the lifetime comes into view. You don't have that problem with this safety because it's totally silent. It makes no noise whatsoever. So when that buck comes into view, that's all you do, and then you're ready to fire. The other nice thing about the way everything works is because you reset the trigger by pulling the trigger itself, your brain is already thinking, I need to flip that safety over. So I think it adds to the safety of this design. There's one other really cool thing about the inline draw lock, and that is the tech support department at Hickory Creek Archery. It's one guy, and it's the guy that designed it. If you have any problems installing it or figuring out how to get it tuned, you give him a call and he'll help you through it. If you want to know more about the inline draw lock, you can see a link for Hickory Creek Archery in the video description below. If you like this video, tell YouTube. Click that like button. It'll really help me out. Be sure to subscribe so you catch all my other videos on archery and guns and other cool stuff. I appreciate you watching and I hope to see you next time on Twang and Bang.